Welcome to Dan's On Fandoms, I'm Dan, with the release of the Chapter 11 episode of The Mandalorian, The Heiress. Star Wars fans got to see Katie Sackhoff reprise her role as the Mandalorian warrior, Bo-Katan Kryze. The episode provided a sliver of background information on Bo-Katan, but it didn't shed a full light into her backstory. Because of that, I figured it'd be a good time to dive into Bo-Katan's history and discuss everything we know about her up to this point in case you haven't watched The Clone Wars and or Star Wars Rebels. So let's dive into everything we know about Bo-Katan Kryze at this time. Born sometime before the start of the Clone Wars into House Kryze, Bo-Katan Kryze was a Mandalorian human female warrior who called the planet Mandalore her home. Prior to the blockade of Naboo and the events of the Phantom Menace, Bo-Katan's sister, Duchess Satine Kryze, became leader of Mandalore and created a pacifist and more peaceful attitude and culture. This idea was in stark opposition to the Mandalorian culture that previously permeated their society, which valued the Mandalorian custom of waging war for the glory of their world. Civil war soon broke out, but Satine and her pacifist government eventually prevailed. Bo-Katan, however, still believed in and valued Mandalore's warrior ways and culture, which led her to joining the Mandalorian terrorist group Death Watch in 21 BBY. Eventually, Bo-Katan became a lieutenant to the leader of Death Watch, Pre Vizsla, and would become a leader of the elite unit known as the Night Owls. With Bo-Katan's aid, Death Watch sought to undermine and overthrow Duchess Satine, which led to bo encountering and going up against Ahsoka Tano in 20 BBY. By 19 BBY, Pre Vizsla aligned himself and Death Watch with Darth Maul and his Sith apprentice and brother, Savage Opress. With the help of Maul and his criminal syndicate, the Shadow Collective, Death Watch was able to overthrow and imprison Duchess Satine. However, Maul and Pre Vizsla soon disagreed on how Mandalore should proceed with Satine overthrown, which resulted in Maul killing Pre Vizsla. In opposition to to Maul's leadership, Bo-Katan and many of the Night Owls broke away from Maul and his cohort. Civil war soon erupted on Mandalore and, even though Bo-Katan attempted to free her imprisoned sister to undermine Maul's grip over Mandalore, Satine would eventually go on to be murdered by Maul. Maul was soon captured and imprisoned by Darth Sidious, but he was able to escape his imprisonment and recapture Mandalore. This prompted Bo-Katan to align herself with the former Jedi, Ahsoka Tano, and the two were able to request aid from the Republic to help defeat Maul and his Shadow Collective. After defeating Maul and removing him from power, Bo-Katan was named Regent of Mandalore by the Jedi before Ahsoka left the planet to head to Coruscant. However, the Republic forces who remained on Mandalore following the conflict soon became Imperial forces after Darth Sidious had executed Order 66 and taken control of the Republic and reorganized it as the Galactic Empire. Violence again erupted throughout Mandalore due to the Imperial occupation over the planet, and Bo-Katan was eventually betrayed by Clan Sack and forcefully removed from her place of power. Over the course of nearly two decades, Bo-Katan worked to resist and defeat the Imperial occupation. In 1 BBY, she was given the Darksaber, an ancient Mandalorian lightsaber that was respected by Mandalorians as a symbol of leadership by her fellow Mandalorian, Sabine Wren. Sabine's hope was that Bo-Katan could reunite a fractured and divided Mandalore to end the Imperial occupation of their homeworld. After this point, there aren't too many details about Bo-Katan's life, that is, until she reappeared in 9 ABY in the Season 2 episode of The Mandalorian, The Heiress. In that episode, Bo-Katan informed Din Djarin that she fought in the Great Purge, which was an event where the Empire had a sweeping defeat over Mandalore, resulting in the Empire acquiring a large amount of Beskar and most of the Mandalorian people being killed. Furthermore, Bo-Katan, Din, Koska Reeves, and Axe Woves were able to hijack an Imperial Gozanti, which they planned to use in their fight to retake Mandalore. And that's everything we know about Bo-Katan at this time. Bo-Katan is a very intriguing, nuanced, and spectacular character. When she was first introduced, she was a terrorist. However, over time, she would go on to become a freedom fighter, attempting to overthrow outsider and imperial rule over Mandalore. As I mentioned in my breakdown for Chapter 11, Bo-Katan's inclusion in The Mandalorian paves the way for a possible spin-off series that could focus on Bo-Katan's time fighting the Empire during the time of the Great Purge and or during or leading up to the events of The Mandalorian, which is exciting. Either way, Bo-Katan is a character that myself and many Star Wars fans are hoping to see more of. But what are your thoughts on Bo-Katan Kryze? And do you want to see a potential spin-off series with Bo-Katan? Let us know down in the comments. Want more Star Wars content? Check out some of our other videos. Please like and subscribe and stay nerdy.